Hello all you quilters out there. Welcome back to my farmhouse sewing room. I'm Marne and it's been a few days. Uh, I'm recovering from a, a nasty cold that I've had and I still look pretty rough and sound pretty rough. But today is the day that I finally want to finish this journey on my Tilda quilt. I have it all um, quilted and I'm excited. I uh, have a lot to tell about it. Um, I have my binding all cut and I want to take you through on how I bind a quilt today. Um, this is a really big quilt. Um, I don't have the dimensions on the pattern. I'm, I'm unprepared. I wanted to get this video up to kind of show you how I'm going to finish this off. Um, the back that I chose for this originally wasn't big enough. And my husband always chastises me for not having a backing that's big enough for the quilter. But I had gotten that from a yard sale and I thought for sure it was big enough. But when I got it up there, I think it was, it was big enough one way, but it wasn't big enough for another way. So I had to make an emergency run to Sheets So Creative and see Erin and get a new back for this quilt. So I will go ahead and show you what I did. And I'm just gonna move you down and you can kind of see my quilting, hopefully. I chose um, Kay's Grandmother's Garden for my pattern. And I don't know if you can see this well as it's laying here, but it had the hexy flowers. Uh, the hexy flowers in here you can kind of see the hexy flowers in here and then it had like these little swirls and little leaves on here and it just really fit this quilt I really like the hexies because they kind of remind me of like chicken wire and I just thought it was fitting I really like the other pattern as well so I had a tough decision on choosing so my back I chose I chose this warm yellow color it's kind of got like a little darker yellow and a little lighter yellow it's kind of it's kind of like a grunge, but it's not a grunge, but it just kind of has that light and dark yellow splashes all through it. And I did chose, choose, I did choose the um, seagrass thread um, since I chose the yellow back. So I kind of got the best of both worlds because we were deciding on whether we wanted to do the yellow thread or the seagrass. And since I had the yellow back, I chose the seagrass uh, thread, uh, thread color for it. So it really turned out nice. My binding is going to be the same as my sashings in here, and I do have them all cut up, and I'm going to walk you through on how I join them and, and press them and put, let me see how I get this, and put this, this um, binding onto this quilt um, because I think this might be uh, an experience for any of you that machine bind and how I do it. Um, I like to join my, 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 pieces on the whatever you call that on the diagonal so I'm going to walk you through that too I have a foot on my juki that's the quarter inch foot that um I can put my binding on with that and then when I flip it over to the front because I I sew up my binding on the back to the front and I'm going to do the front um when I tack it down to the front, I'm going to do that on my Janome because that's the machine I like to use when I'm tacking down my binding. But I'll walk you through all how to miter the corners and everything. I know um, for a long time I was very intimidated by binding and doing the corners and how to stitch it down. And I've practiced a lot, you know, the past year or two learning how to do this. And I think I've, I've, come, I've got it down pretty good, you know, practice makes progress and I know a lot of people out there are intimidated by bindings and how to put them together, but I've learned from other people that I sew with that's taught me some little tips and tricks about the joining and I will get into that with you too. It, it's going to be um, hopefully a lesson for you to, to do it yourself. If I can do it, you can do it, okay? So let's get started. I've got my <clears throat> stuff all set up here and ready to go. I had to change my foot out on my Juki because um, when we're sewing the binding pieces together, we're going to sew the triangle design. <clears throat> I need my regular foot on there, so um, I had to swap that back out real quick. So um, first thing I'm going to tell you is about your strips here. I cut mine at two and a half inches and um, most bindings I know people do are two and a half inches. Some people do two and a quarter. I think that's a preference. So I'm going to move you down here on my table. And hopefully you can kind of see what I've got going on here. This is my starting strip. And very important, when you're starting off, I want my strip to be hanging off to the left of my table. And 
<clears throat> when you go ahead and join, don't do the other side and have your, your strip over here and then try to do your join. It'll mess you all up. Believe me, ask me how I know. So I want my strip always to be hanging from my left side. And I'm just going to kind of move it up here. And then I'm going to take my next strip. And I've got a bunch of them here. And honestly, don't tell the quilting police. I didn't um, figure out the math for my, my pieces. I just kind of cut to, I guesstimate to what I need because I have a few extra short pieces here that I want to use up. And I might add them in, so I'll figure it out as I kind of go. Um, you do it your way, I'll do it mine. Um, some people like to figure out and do the math um, to figure out their binding, but I wasn't very good in math, I'll be honest with you. So, I, I'm very visual, and this is just how I like to do it, so. <clears throat> and I have plenty of this fabric. <clears throat> so, now you want your second piece. Your second piece is going to kind of dangle here in front of me. And you want your pretty, your pretty side, to your pretty side. So I'm just going to lay this on to my, my piece here that's laying to my left. And this one I'm going to put on the top, just like a T. And make it nice and pressed and pretty. So, pretty sides to pretty. Pretty to pretty. And then I'm going to take this upper right hand corner and I'm going to cheat. You can draw a line if you want to, but I prefer to do it this way because it works. And I'm going to fold that over till my ends meet in the corner here. And it's all nice and square. And I'm just going to make a little press line, and that's what I'm going to sew on. So I got me a little press line now. And now I'm going to sew from this corner, from the left corner, down to the right corner. And my clips, I could put a couple of clips on this. So that it doesn't move when I take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to take you over and I'll show you a couple times and how we do this join and then you can uh, and then I'll do the rest off camera and you can uh, hopefully figure it out so this is how you make your 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 triangular join your your fabric that you're going to add to is going to hang off to the left then the fabric you want to join is going to be hanging in a straight up and down you know in front of me and line up the edges make my crease and then I'm going to sew on that crease line. So I'm going to take you over to my jukey and let you watch how I sew this together. So I'm just going to drag it over here. I got my junior mints. Huh. Oh, and my, my light here. Sometimes I don't feel like I have enough light so I kind of angled that up. So you can kind of see not the best lighting in this corner. And I have lights somewhere here. Let's put this thing down. And where's my rebar? And I'm going to get that lined up right on my press line. Very close. And I'm going to sew that right down. And move them over there because we use them again. And now, <clears throat> you can see we've got this little, this little tail on here, but I want to show you, I need to check this, and you can check it before you, um, after you do your crease line to make sure you've got it right. And let's see, let's get you down here. Let me make our crease line. See, now, before I cut it, I'm going to fold this up over and just kind of see how it looks. And it's pretty close. I see it's a little off up at the top, but not by much. Because when we're finished adding all of the strips, we're going to um, fold this in half and press it. But right now, I think it looks fine, so I'm going to cut this. I've got a tail on here. I'm going to cut this, this excess off the back. And get my, cut that thread and cut it about a quarter of an inch from the seam. I'll save those. Get rid of that thread. And then I'm going to flip this over. And I really want to um, make this lay flat. So I'm just going to press the seam open. And this will take all the bulk out of your binding. So I'm just kind of finger pressing. And I'll press that seam open. And... So we've got a join there, and you really can't even see the sew line where you where you joined it, which is pretty cool. So, and 
to get me started on this folding, I could start pressing, pressing it over. I like to use a little water because this helps my fold to stay. I'm just going to give you a quick rundown on how to do a couple of joins and then um, we'll finish the rest and then we will get this sewed to the back of the quilt. But this is an easy process. Um, to do your own binding. I think you have to get comfortable with stuff. I know I was very uncomfortable. I was determined I wanted to learn this. And it just takes, takes time, but it's, it's not hard. It's just remembering the steps. So I can kind of do this as I go, and because I'm going to get a really long piece going on here pretty soon. So if I kind of sew and then um, fold as I go, it'll make this process easier than having to um, go back through and press it all in half. You could just, you know, sew all your pieces on first and then go and sew it in half, but I just think this is a little bit better if I can kind of sew and press as I go. So I'm really excited to get this done. And any of you that's watched the heart quilt that I just did in my last video, the heart quilt is all done, but I got to take you all on the journey of um, getting the back for it. So that will be probably be my next video. So I'm not going to pull, um, press it all the way to the end. I'm just going to leave this here. So now I'm just going to leave this flat part. So it's facing me and take my next strip. And we're going to do this again. Pretty side to pretty side. And I'm going to get them all lined up across the top and along the side here. And then I'm going to fold that down till it meets the edge. And then I'm going to kind of finger press. And then I'm going to take my iron and press it. And that will make me a nice crease line. And if you're ever in doubt of yourself, if you press the right way, you can always flip this up and you'll see your diagonals join. So, but if you keep your strip to your left and then the, trip, the strip that you're adding, you know, straight in front of you and place it on there and then take your right hand corner and press it over and make your press line and then and put it back up. And then I like to clip it just to keep it in place so I can take it over to the sewing machine and sew it. I'm going to show you one more time how I join. I had to make a stop because the gimbal died on me. So, all right, we'll get on with this. back over here and we'll get down here and I'll show you so we did the join and you can see it lines up really nice so I'm just going to cut this back part off and press it open and while the gimbal was charging I went ahead and put all the long strips together so I have quite a um row of these, but I'm going to add on these last few short strips, but I just wanted to finish um, showing you how I did this again so that you would hopefully get the concept of it. So I'm just going to press the seam open <clears throat> and I will press it in half some more. And then I've got a couple more short strips here. I'll add these on. These are just the strips that I wanted to use up, so I'm just going to add those on. So I'll sew them off camera, and um, I'll finish getting this folded in half. And then I'm going to move you over to my other table, and um, I'm going to show you how I... A lot of people don't um, clip theirs to the, you know, they just sew it on as they go. I would rather clip mine on, and that way I can tell if I've got enough... Um, enough binding cut and I'm not surprised at the end because I don't measure <laughs> so um 
I'm going to show you how I clip it together and um, and how I miter the corners. So um, I will clip it to the back of my quilt and I will miter it as I go. And then I'm going to bring it back over here to the Juki and put my quarter inch foot on and I'm going to zip it through that. It's very fast and quick to zip it through the Juki. And then I go back over to my island table and I put it on my Janome machine and I stitch it down on the top. And I did put two different colors of thread in my Janome machine because the back of my quilt is pale yellow and I picked a yellow thread. Yeah, I think I have some yellow thread on the back. And then the top I have like a goose color that will um, blend nicely in with this. So, but it's, the both of them are Guterman threads. So that will make it nice to um, run it through my machine. So I'm going to finish this up and then I'm going to show you how I pin it on the back. So stay with me. Okay, you guys, I've got my quilt laid out here on my table, as you can see. Got threads all over. I got a little thing of clippies here and I've got a pile of binding. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip my binding um, raw edge to raw edge on the back side of my quilt. So I'm just going to kind of position this around so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Hopefully. And let's see, this is pretty big, so I need some space to kind of spread it out. And I'm just going to get it started. And I'm going to start on a side because I want to I want to do my join on the side of my quilt, not at the top. You could do it on the bottom, but I think I'm going to start mine on the on the side here. And of course, I'm going to find threads all over. So now I've got my clips and find a good end of binding. There's the end. And you can see I've got it folded and I just want to put my raw edge to the raw edge. And what I want to do is I want to start in the middle of the side here and I want to leave a nice long tail, usually between 10 and 12 inches, but I guesstimate. So I'm just going to kind of make my tail right there and then I'm going to start and it's raw edge to raw edge. Okay, you can see what I'm doing here. And where I want to start, I'm going to put um, double clips. So I'll know where that, um, that's where I want to start sewing. And then when I come around, around, all the way around, I should have some overlapping and I'll just put double clips where I want to stop. So um, this is going to be a mess with threads. I'm a stickler about threads. So I'm just going to move this over. Hopefully you can see when I get to the mitering part. I just like to clip mine on at first before I sew. And then it just has everything in place for me. And I don't have to fuss with anything. And I can kind of just have my binding nice and taut. Which I need to slide this down just a little bit. I should have a weight. <clears throat> so I'm just going to put a clip every so often just to kind of hold it in place and this will give me a definite idea of what I've got. I'm going to make it all the way almost to the corner and of course I have this excess so I'm going to kind of drape this off. And now I'm going to come to the corner here and this is where I'm going to bring this up kind of at a, like a 90 degree angle and I like to finger press so that the corner comes right to the corner and then you're going to bring it back down and kind of kind of hold it at the top and I'm going to bring my binding back down over itself I'm going to hold that in place and I'm doing this with five fingers so I hope you can understand what I'm doing so now you can kind of see I have this little bit of excess in the corner which that's just going to lay down on top of that and then I'm just going to throw a clip right there so I know that that's going to be my mitered or corner so when I start here and I sew I'm going to sew all the way up to about a quarter of an inch toward the end and then I'm going to stop and I'm going to cut my threads and then I'll turn my quilt and I'll lay that back down and then I'll start at the top and sew all the way down until I get to the other corner and I will stop at a quarter inch quarter of an inch toward the end 
So let's see. My pressing was a little bit off. I want to try to get that up so that both edges meet. So everything's nice and straight. So I'm going to flip this all the way around. And I've got lots of binding here. I should have plenty. Put all the little pieces on too. <clears throat> so, like I said, I'm working with a very large quilt here. So I'm just gonna kind of flip things around. And keep on flipping. And I want all my edges to meet up along the edge. So that I can just feed this through on the juki. It makes the juki with a quarter inch foot makes this really fast to stitch this down to get my binding on the back side. And that's good. And I lied about having yellow thread as my bobbin thread for my Janome. I actually found some of this um, seagrass uh, thread, which is what I want to put in my bobbin thread when I do the top stitching down because uh, with machine binding, you are gonna have that stitch line on the back. Usually I would pick a color that would blend, but since this has some, um, that seagrass thread and I had some in my Guterman thread, I thought, well, I will just use that on the backs since it's already got the, the, the seagrass color in it. So backside's not something you're really gonna see anyway. And, and a lot of old fashioned quilters, they like to hand bind. I'm just not a good hand sewer and I don't enjoy hand sewing. So I would much rather machine bind. It's just easier for me. And being that this is my quilt, you know, I'm not gonna be graded or judged <laughs> by how I put my binding on. But I know a lot of women out there are, or men are serious about, um, you know, hand stitching their binding down because they don't want to see those stitches. But if you can live with, you know, the stitches on the back side, you know, that's that's a preference. So I just like to machine bind because it's easier and it's quicker. And I just, you know, this would take me forever to try to hand sew. I don't have the patience. <laughs> I love my sewing machine. <laughs> I do. I love to sew. Okay. So. Oops. Yep, might as well just dump them all over. I'm going to pick them up anyway. I don't need them so you can kind of see how awkward this is to kind of um, get this clipped down. But, um,. I'm not going to make you watch the whole thing of me clipping this down. So while I, why don't I um, clip this down and, and then I'll take you back over to the Juki and I'll show you how I stow it down. So I'm going to try to keep this not so boring. <laughs> All right. Okay. Everything set up. Oh, I like big quilts. I cannot lie. <laughs> This is a really big quilt, and hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I've tried to set up the camera here, so I've got my um, quarter-inch foot set on my Juki, and yep, my foot's up. So I'm going to kind of show you how I do this, because this is going to take oops, a lot of manipulating for me. I'm already messing up my blinds, so I've got to kind of get it on my shoulder, and I'm going to start right on the side here where I told you about that I double clipped to start. So what I like to do is get those clips just past my foot and then I can slide this right under and get it into that three quarter inch foot. Get my thread in there. Ah, this is how we do it. All right, my needle down and I'm going to, whew, hopefully feed this through and give you an idea on how I get it done. So here we go. I'm going to start 
I'm gonna do a little back stitch so it doesn't go anywhere. take you back over to the island table and I will show you how we're gonna flip this over and um, put it together all right we got the binding on I've been sweating like crazy I don't know if it's because I had all the quilt on top of me or what but um, um this is the very important about the join and um, a lady at uh, a group sewing group that I, I like to go to uh, taught me this trick and it works. I don't know if any of you have problems when, when you do your join on your bindings and um, if it gets twisted or you can't get it right. I think this is the best way to show you is how I was showed and it works for me every time. It's helpful. So the first thing that you want to do is when you're making your join and I'm going to move you over here so you can kind of see um, exactly what I'm doing. You want your join to be at the very top of your when you're joining it. Don't do it on the side or on the bottom. Have your join at the top and it's facing you. And you can see I've got lots of extra on here and I like a lot of extra because if I make a mistake and I cut it wrong, you know, at least I have some extra that's already on here. But um so, and I don't know if I left enough space, because usually I like to leave a wider space than this to, hey, get up in there, and um, make my join. So, what I want to do is, let's see, I'm cutting this close, Maybe I might have to take out a couple stitches, but I'm just going to cut this off right here, because I know I have plenty. And, hey, if you want to get off from there, little man? have a distraction <laughs> on my quilt. So now I want, I got this piece shortened up and I want to take this piece and I want it to be two and a half inches long over top of this piece. So what I'm going to do is take my little ruler here and I'm going to um, look for my two and a half inch line. And I'm going to mark at two and a half inches. Right, please. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, if you could be in my sewing room, I'm telling you, I have animals and they are nuts. <laughs> so, come on. You've got to get off there. Let's go find a toy. Let's find a toy. Where's your big banana? Eat a big banana. Here you go. Okay. Back to business here. Okay, so I'm going to bring this over at that two and a half inch line. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of put a little fold line right on that. Or just, I'm not going to put it right on the line. I'm going to make it so I want to see it. I want this to be tight. So I probably should make it just like an eighth of an inch um, less than my line. Just so because it, it stretches a little bit, it'll be nice and tight. So now that I've made a press line, I'm going to just cut it right there. Come on, get your toy. Not be on my quilt. Okay, so now what we want to do is bring this toy over here my quilt. I'm going to take the left hand piece and I'm going to put it up and I'm going to open it up. Just like this. 
And then I'm going to bring the right side and I am going to bring it over and put it across the top like a T. And of course I have a join right here, so this is what a great spot that is. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring the, the left corner down to over top of itself. I know this is opposite of what I showed you, but you have to figure that these are facing. I'm doing this right. This piece here, yes. watching here, I don't know if you can see, I've got the left side so it's standing up, and then this piece I'm going to bring it over, and then I'm going to bring this top left corner down and I'm going to make a crease line. And I don't want to get this twisted, so I'm hoping I'm showing you right. And I'm going to bring it over itself, because I have this crease line, so if I want to check it bring it over like that and my folds would come together so that would be right. I should have left this bigger. Sorry. This is not very good cameramanship. To show you how to make this join so I'm going to try to bring it in a little bit closer if I can. You can kind of see that I have this straight up. And this part, I'm opening it up and I'm putting it across the top. And you can see this is a part where I've joined, but I'm still going to bring that corner down and I'm going to bring it across and it'll be a crease line right there. And then I'm going to sew almost across my already joined. This is kind of awkward because I've not ever had this happen before, but I'm going to sew this and I'm going to join it if this makes any sense. There's a lot of videos out there on joins, so I'm going to go off camera and I'm going to join this up and then I'll show you how um, it comes together. All right, guys, I've made the join um, in the, you can see where my little chalk line, well, if you can see it there, but there's a little blue chalk line here um, where my thumb is. That's my chalk line. Right here is my join. Um, it was at a seam, so it was kind of awkward to show you um, how it went together, but when I sewed it on the Janome, I sewed it together, and it worked. I cut off the excess, I pressed it, and then I finished sewing this, this hole up on my, on my Juki. So if you have any problems with join, I can probably do a simpler version of showing you how to do it, but if you make your join at the top and, you know, have your two tails, which I should have left a bigger space because I really had to scrunch this up to, to fit it in my sewing machine. I've got some threads in here that are caught. I'm probably going to be picking a lot of those. But you have your left side straight up and then your right side across. And then I bring the, the left corner down to the bottom right corner and I make a crease line. Or you can uh, pencil it. And then I, you know, sew it on that crease line or your pencil line. And then um, when you sew it, you know, You'll take it out of your machine and you'll open up your, your binding and, and, you know, pull it. And it, should, it shouldn't be twisted or anything. It should lay flat and you'll have that hole right here. So if you got it right, you just cut off the excess and then you will um, stitch up the rest of the way, which you can see where I've started here and backstitched. And then I stopped here and backstitched. So that was my hole that I left and it was probably about a 10 inch hole. So, um, like I said, it's really simple. The trick of it is, is to have your, your binding and your join at the top facing you it, it works i don't know why it works but it does so it's just something you know to um keep in mind when you are doing a join so i'm all ready to turn this over and i've got my Janome machine all set up so really what i want to do now is the final piece is to um flip this binding over to the front and uh, stitch it along the edge really close to the edge i do have the seagrass bobbin thread. I don't know if maybe I should have used yellow, but I already have the seagrass color on the back. So if there's like that color, a line around the edging of my, my, um, binding, it's not, it's not a big deal. It's the same color thread. So, um, I guess what I'm going to do is, um, start feeding this through my machine here. I can let you watch a little bit. I'm sorry. I can't get close ups like some people do, 
but this is just how I do it and you know everything takes practice you know don't sweat it if it doesn't look perfect because you'll get better as as you go I mean and if you really want to practice with binding do um, pot holders or table runners which I have some fall table runners over there on my design wall if you probably noticed in the beginning um, there are just some things that I put together um, with scraps and of course I've been sickly so I really wanted to get in here in my sewing room and do something but I I didn't want to do anything that was serious like this because I just didn't feel up to it so I just wanted to do something mindless so I mean those are things that I will um, get a bunch of those made I'll throw them on the quilter and I'll bind them up and they make great gifts or they look nice in my house so so um, let's move over here to the Janome, and um, I don't know if you'll be able to see very well of what I'll be doing, but this is my favorite machine to bind on. I like this because I can sit here and my quilt can be on this table and there's also another chair here that kind of helps with the weight so it doesn't drag. So what I like to do is um, start in a corner, and I know I'm going to be picking off threads off this thing like crazy. There's just, once I get it binded, I'll have to go over it and um, find any kind of loose thread that's sticking out. Or, you know, it just annoys me. <laughs> I'm a stickler about threads, even when I'm quilting on the quilter, you know, if somebody's got threads loose on their quilts, I'm constantly picking them off. So I'm going to kind of balance this up. And I'm going to start in one corner. And if I got any threads, which I do, um, I can clip them off as I go. I have a pair of nips here, which there's one there, so I can just kind of get that off in there. So it's not going to be sticking out of my binding. You know, threads for days. So this is where my miter is, right in here in the corner, and I'm just going to start. And I'm going to start on the long side here, and I'm just going to kind of fold it up. And I'll start right here at this corner. So when I finish, I should be able to come back around and that little corner will lay right down and the, the ends will meet and it'll miter nicely. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start at the top. Oops, get this thing underneath here. And I've already got my stitch length at 2.6. I like it a little bit longer because if I need to take something out, I can. close to the edge, and I don't want too close to the edge, and then I'm going to drop my needle so it just holds everything in position, and then I can kind of get this thing so it's not going to drag or pull as I'm feeding it through. And then I'm going to take you through the whole process of this. I will just take you through on how I get started, and uh, excuse me. Um, and then I will show you the finished product. I really like that my binding matches my border because it kind of blends and then it'll give my back a nice uh, a bit of, you know, border on the back as well. And I know I'm going to have threads here so I'm going to try to cover up most of them. But I'm so what I'm doing here is I'm just feeding this through my foot and I am stitching very close to the edge and my thread very much matches these little brownish colored flowers in this so it just is a really nice um, thread color. I was going to use black but um, I had this color in the Guterman so I decided to go with the Guterman. So I will give you some close-ups um, when I get this finished so you can kind of see the stitching and how it looks um, if you ever want to try machine binding something that you know you might want to take your time at especially when you're top stitching down I just do a little at a time and I just kind of sew it through nicely this was a process and this is a big quilt and I want it to look nice so I'm just going to kind of take my time with it so and um, when I get to the corners um, I instead of um, stopping I will just fold the corner over so that they might, the miters, the mitered ends meet, which they should when you get to the corner, and they'll match up nicely. And you might have to finagle with it a little bit, but um, it'll work. If you did your, you know, your ends when you sewed the back side on, or you sew it to like a quarter of an inch from the end. 
and then you stop and back stitch and then you turn your quilt and then you lay that little corner the, the you know the mitered end down like I showed you when we were stitching it on the back. I wish I could show you up close. Um, but, I mean this is a learned kind of thing I guess. I don't know. I mean everybody starts somewhere. So um, if you're new to it, start small. That's what I did. And worst case scenario, if you know you don't you're still intimidated by binding, you can always do a rollover binding or if your back is bigger than your front, instead of having your quilt trimmed, which Jim usually trims them for us, um, you can leave your back the excess on and then trim it, you know, two and a half inches bigger than your quilt top and then you can just kind of fold it in and then you can just kind of miter it over and I've done that in the beginning with a lot of my quilts because I was intimidated by uh, binding but I really wanted to learn so I took the plunge and I learned you know so um, you have to figure it out and do what's best for yourself I mean don't be afraid of it it just takes practice and takes time So I'm at the full length of this. Um, I, can, I can't really show you up close what I do with the corners, but I can show you the after effects. So I think what I'm going to do is finish sewing this off camera, and then I will go through the details with you once I get it all when I get it all stitched down. So how about that? So I will show you at the end what it's going to look like, and I don't know. I can show you here what I'm going to do real quick. You see on this corner here where I've started, it's kind of up. So when I get to the bottom, I will, I won't, I'll stitch to about right here, close to the end. And when I get close to the end, I'm going to take the bottom piece and I'm going to bring it forward. And then I'll just keep sewing until I catch that edge. And then I'll leave my needle down and I'll turn my blanket and then I'll just keep sewing instead of stopping. So if you do this right, and you sewed it right, you should be able to just turn it. So I'll show you when I get it finished. All right. All right, she's finished. <laughs> she is binded, she's quilted. I tried to bring you in as close as I can so that hopefully you can see um, the Kay's grandmother's garden quilting in this. Um, it does have the hexi flowers. Uh, my binding matches very well. And let me see, I'm gonna have to move you up so you can kind of see the top here. The binding really does match all the way. So it blends in with the border nice, but I've got it all stitched down around all sides. So it just gives it a nice finished look. And I'll just kind of move you around so you can kind of see. This is a big, big girl. And she goes all the way to the floor. Um, I will kind of open this up so you can kind of see the quilting on the back. You can see the little uh, hexy flowers in here. Just looks really nice. Um, I just love it. This has really been a process with this quilt. I am super happy with it. Um, she's gonna look beautiful on my bed. Uh, I'm thinking about making those pillowcases that go with her, but um, I don't know, I haven't decided yet. I do have a lot going on in my, in my room. Um, I've got the heart quilt finished up, so I'll probably take y'all on that journey next. Um, if the top is finished and it looks amazing, and I am going to go to Aaron's shop probably sometime early next week to pick out a back for it and get it on the quilter. It is very beautiful, very colorful. I do have something in mind, but um, I will keep it a secret for now. So I'll let you know on that. But um, for those of you that have shared with me your Tildas and, and your ideas, uh, I one, one subscriber sent me a message. Uh, she emailed me and she showed me her Tilda quilt. And she did it in a Halloween style, which I thought was amazing. Um, I do want to put that um, picture of her quilt up maybe on my Country Quilting page on Facebook. If you haven't checked that out, I'm on her Country Quilting um, on, on Facebook. And we try to put some things on there. I'm kind of guilty I haven't put anything on there lately. But um, I will get some stuff uploaded that I've been working on. Um, like I said, I have some table runners that I'm working on. Uh, I will definitely get this quilt finished, you know, taking some pictures of it and get that up so everybody can see it and admire it. Uh, I just love the old-fashioned feel of it. It's just, 
is just beautiful. I couldn't be happier in making a quilt. And yes, I will make one of these again. I want to do the Windy Days, and it is under the tildesworld.com. Um, it is called Windy Days, and her she has the same little braided like hair, and um, it has all of her hair blowing to one side, and she has a little dog down beside her. It's just really cute. But I'll probably make that like a winter project or something. Who knows? I mean, Christmas is right around the corner, and I've already got ideas to make for um, my family and stuff, so I'll keep you all informed on that. I have placemats that I've been wanting to do. There's so many things I want to do. It's crazy. But thank you for coming along today on this journey of the Tilda quilt and and getting the binding. And if you have any questions about binding, I can try to do a little sample. I'm sorry my... I, my filming is not as good as others, you know, where you can get up and close, but um, I can help answer any questions, you know, don't be afraid to bind your own quilt. It's a journey, it's a process, and it's a learning thing, and um, it's really rewarding when you get, you know, to where you want to be, so um, this concludes this for now, so thanks for um, coming to my sewing room, and don't mind me, it'd be I'm a little hoarse yet. <clears throat> At least I don't have to share germs. You know, we have the screens that separate us, you know, so, but um, it's getting better. So I will chat at you soon. Please like and please subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you all for who have subscribed and watching my channel. I've seen a lot of um, my subscribers at the Athens Quilt Show, Athens PA Quilt Show. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. I love you all. I'll see you soon. Bye.